Now, some people think I'm doing cultural appropriation, but I'm not. I'm a drummer. I'm a percussionist. I've been paid money to drums. I made money drumming. Um, I've also done a lot of different things, but I'm everybody's favorite C-minus drummer, which even gives me more permission to take liberty. And actually, this sounds like an, like a, like an indigenous Native American uh, um, sound, but it's actually made in uh, India out of some rather nice wood, but those chimes are good. Now, you might ask yourself, what, is, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to get you into the mood. So when I was in Texas last year, uh, my friend and I were traveling back roads to Texas. And uh, every now and then I'm like, oh my God, it's a thrift store. I gotta go. Ah, please. It's like, okay, you got two minutes and 40 seconds. And then now I'm leaving. That wasn't that bad, but that's what it felt like. But anyway, so when I was uh, down uh, uh, in Southern Texas, down between, um, uh, anyway, close to the Mexican border, can I call it the Mexican border? The Latinx border. I don't know what the term is. Yeah, I was down by the Latinx border looking at all the people that look like burritos. Oh, no, sorry. That, that, that's, what, that's what Jill says. Anyway, so I'm down there. It's a pretty cool place. We drove all over Texas, but look what I found. I found an old Texas school book. An old Texas school book. When the Storm God Rides. Tejas, T-E-J-A-S, Tejas and other Indian legends. And so um, I read one of these stories to my son, Jake, and he's like, Dad, that is so cool. You gotta read more of those. You gotta put them on your YouTube. So at, at risk of being uh, cited for being a bad person and copyright infringement, but this thing is pretty old. I think the, uh, the date on this when it was, um, I think it was late 30s. Here we go. When the Storm God Rides. Tejas and other Indian legends, indigenous legends, thank you. Um, and uh, it was published 19, 1936. So I guess this was as Hitler was ramping up to his evil ways. And we still, I guess in 1936, there was still kind of a, a, a connection, because you know Texas was settled later, uh, dealing with Comanches and all, um, who, by the way, were a pretty badass group of indigenous. There's a story about the Comanches. Joe Rogan did a show on it. You should read it. Anyway, so today I'm going to read something I've never read before uh, from this collection, and uh, of uh, again, um, Tejas and other Indian legends. Um, it's called The Evil Water Spirits. Oh, wait a minute. Where did the big and ugly fishes and the snakes that swim the water come from? I didn't know the fish were ugly. Apparently they are ugly. Anyway, the Indians know. From their forefathers come this story. A long time ago, before the great father had finished putting up all kinds of fish into the river and shady streams, there was an Indian woman who was blessed with twins. The Indian woman was a very proud mother for her two little brown, black-eyed babies, <laughs> gonna catch hell for that one, um, were, good at, were good to look at. And they had good tempers. And because of it, other women of the tribe also wished they might have twin babies. It was in the springtime, and the little twins were about four years old when they began <clears throat> to tire of staying in their mother's wigwam. Their mother one day had gone with the other women of the tribe to pick wild berries that grow in the woods and around the briar patches. Some of these berries the Indians ate as soon as they picked them, but others they dried and stored to eat in winter. When a blanket of frost covered the field and woods and few birds and beasts could be found. The mother had left the little children with their grandmother. This old woman was wrinkled and weak and sleep comes easily to such people whose eyes are made heavy and tired with the weight of many years of hard work and troubles. I'll go ahead and show you this neat piece of indigenous art. It's quite interesting. Yeah. 
Lying down on a deer skin inside the wigwam, the grandmother began to watch the twins as they played near at hand, just outside the door. The day was warm. Even the locusts in the treetops sang lazy, sleepy songs, and the breeze that mowed the leafy limbs of the trees whispered softly. The old grandmother began to nod. The old <clears throat> her head sunk upon her arm. Without knowing it, she fell asleep in the wigwam. When the twins saw their grandmother was asleep, they put their heads together and whispered. Here was a fine chance to slip off and do something they had wanted to do for a long time. It was to do something that they had watched grown-up Indians do in the bayou that ran along the edge of the camp. The Indians waited in the bayou near its banks and bent down in the shallow water to dig up with their hands the tender roots of the plants they called yankupins, whose broad green leaves lift well above the surface of the bayou. These roots were good to eat. The little twins had seen the Indians gathering them, and they wanted to gather them too. Now their mother was away, and their grandmother was asleep, and they had a chance to do it. Without a word, they slipped away from the wigwam when nobody was looking, and they ran without making a noise with their little back black with their little buckskin moccasins along a grassy path that led toward the bayou. And now they were standing on the brink <clears throat> of a shallow place where a tongue of the bayou ran back into low places in the banks. Everything was still among the banks. Everything was still among the high reeds that grew on the banks and leaned over the water. The twins looked down. They could see the bottom and weeds growing on it. What was in the weeds? They had been told by their mother that evil spirits were there, for she wanted to frighten them so they would not want to go near the bayou and be drowned. But they saw nothing, and they waded in, hand in hand. They saw the broad green pods, or the leaf of lily plants floating a little way from the bank, and they knew that the roots were underneath, growing in the soft mud. Carefully, they waded toward them. The water rose up to their knees. They were not afraid because they had found the evil spirit their mothers, because they had not found the evil spirit their mother had told them about. They waded further. The water was up to their waists. Now they were among the lily pads, and the long stems of the plant slipped against their little brown bodies and tickled them. Here was a place to feel around for the bottom for the roots. The little boy and girl bent over and stretched their short arms down into the water around their feet. They had to bend until their chins were in the water and all their bodies but their heads were beneath the surface. But still they were not afraid because even yet they had not seen the evil spirits their mother had told them were there. It was so nice to be feeling with their fingers in the cool mud. The weeds growing on the bottom tickled their toes and their leaves of the lily plants rubbed against their faces. But just then, when everything seemed so easy and beautiful, something happened. In pulling at a root, one of the twins suddenly slipped and fell. Her head went under water. Then she became frightened, and with a scared cry, she caught at her brother and pulled him down too. The evil spirits seemed to have them now. The lily stems wound around their bodies as they struggled. The warm water filled, filled their open mouths as they tried to call their mother. They tried to get out of the clinging lily stems, but they only slipped into deeper water and became wrapped tighter with the stems that were like ropes. They could not call for help for their mouths were filled, filling with water. They could not get back to the bank for their heads were underwater and they could not reach the bottom anymore. The bright sun faded out swiftly. The songs of the birds were heard no more. The muddy water blinded their eyes and everything became dark. Poor little Indian twins, the evil water spirits they could not see had trapped them. After a while, the Indians came and found the children lying in each other's arms in the shallow water. They could not hear their poor mother wailing, nor could they hear the old grandmother moaning and swinging to and fro in her sorrow. They could not see their fathers as he stood tall, their father as he stood tall, and still looking down at them on the bank where he sternly kept the grief of his father's heart from showing in a warrior's face. That night, while the mother was sitting beside her twins for the last time, watching over their bodies before they were buried with their toys in the earth, 
she asked the great spirits to grant her a wish. For the sake of the other babies of the tribe, she asked that the evil spirits of the water could be given shapes, shapes that could be seen, so that the other babies would see them in the water and be frightened away from them. The great spirit granted the wish of the unselfish mother. He gave to those evil spirits the shapes that all men fear, the shape of the alligator, the big snapping turtle, the garfish with his rows of wicked teeth, and the snake known as the water moccasin. From that time, the little Indian boys and girls could see the evil spirits and kept away from them. Well, there you go. Tejas and other Indian legends. These are authentic tales that have passed on. These are old oral traditions. Can you imagine if we could find some of the oral traditions of the original Manahoic tribe that was around here? And as they had said, that uh, uh, they're very much unique um, to this area that is currently Orange County. Essentially, Orange County today is the footprint of the Manahoic tribe with a little bit of overflow into parts of Culpeper to this indigenous tribe around here, or the three tribes. And then up near Somerset uh, on 33, headed toward uh, uh, Standardsville. There's a, there's a tribe up there. The other one is over down uh, between Walmart. The, when you cross the road on Walmart and follow up the river on uh, Indian Town Road. So that's what the maps show. So. Um, thought you'd appreciate that, and I appreciate you tuning in. Nice Sunday story. Kind of depressing, I know, but uh, sometimes we have to learn from our mistakes. Motley Patriot, over and out.